Hi, my name is Matthew Warner and I am a physician in the Department of Anesthesiology at the Mayo Clinic. I'm here to talk to you today about an article that will be in the upcoming Mayo Clinic proceedings titled, Prophylactic Plasma Transfusion Prior to Interventional Radiology Procedures is Not Associated with Reduced Bleeding Complications. To give a brief overview, the transfusion of plasma, which is most commonly fresh frozen plasma or FFP, prior to interventional procedures is exceedingly common. In fact, the most commonly cited reason for a plasma transfusion is to correct an abnormal coagulation test result, which is most commonly an elevated international normalized ratio, or an elevated INR value, prior to an invasive procedure. So this prophylactic therapy prior to an invasive procedure. However, there's really no compelling evidence to support such a practice. And in fact, many studies have shown that patients with mild to moderately elevated INR values do not have an increased risk for bleeding when they undergo these procedures. What our study proposed to do was to look at um, bleeding complications in patients that received plasma therapy uh, prior to their interventional radiology procedure, and also we're going to look at other patient import, important patient outcomes. So what we performed was a retrospective cohort study looking at approximately 25,000 unique patients that underwent an interventional radiology procedure over a five-year time period. Of those, 18,000 had an INR value available, and you can follow this in the figure one of the manuscript. And of those 18,000, approximately 10% had abnormal INR values before the procedure, and of those, approximately 10% were transfused with plasma prophylactically to prevent a bleeding complication. Now, when we compared groups that either had plasma therapy or did not have plasma therapy, what we found was those that received plasma did not have any reduction in their uh, red blood cell requirements, either during the procedure or after. In addition, uh, patients that received plasma actually had increased ICU admission rates. And this was after adjustment for baseline differences between the two groups. So what we concluded from our study is that uh, plasma transfusion was not necessarily associated with improved clinical outcomes. And on the contrary, patients that received plasma seemed to have more red cell requirements, almost a two-fold increase, and had higher ICU admission rates. Now, while this is a retrospective study, we can't necessarily determine the precise clinical circumstances that surrounded each transfusion decision. There are several plausible reasons to explain why some patients who receive plasma would have increased red blood cell requirements. Uh, the most simplest explanation is that maybe this is a reflection of provider-specific transfusion practices with certain providers more inclined to give plasma and hence more inclined to give red cells. However, there are several other more physiologic explanations that could associate plasma with increased red blood cell requirements. We all know that plasma is a high volume product. Um, it can cause significant hemodilution. It could drop uh, hemoglobin values below common red blood cell transfusion triggers. In addition, the plasma and the associated volume expansion could increase intravascular pressures and that could result in disruption of newly formed hemostatic plugs and increased bleeding. So certainly there's a lot of work to be done to sort out um, relationships and what is going on here. Certainly our study certain just shows associations. It does not show anything about causality. And the next steps, we really want to see these results um, shown in a larger trial. We want um, to look for external validity and generalizability. So ideally this would be something that would be studied in a multi-center prospective uh, study or in a randomized control trial. So to summarize, what our study found was that patients that received plasma prior to interventional radiology procedures did not have improved clinical outcomes. And on the contrary, they actually had increased rates of red blood cell transfusion in the next 24 hours. And they also ended up in the ICU more frequently. So we, if nothing else, this should at least give pause to providers that are um, inclined to give plasma on a routine basis for non-bleeding patients undergoing such procedures. We thank you for your time. We look forward to studying this topic further in the future. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org.
This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.